In my video on the teleological argument for God, I explained why the argument doesn't actually show that life or the universe was designed. The hallmark of design which apologists propose, specified complexity, is simply not how we detect design, such as when we notice a watch lying on the ground. The actual hallmark of design, which we notice in a watch, is the familiar craftsmanship that we recognize from known designers, human beings. But, for the sake of argument, let's assume that everything I said in that video is false, and that the feature which indicates design is indeed some kind of complexity, be it specified or fine-tuned. If this is true, what implications might this have? Well, if we accept the idea that complexity indicates design, then this would seem to have something to say about the classic question, who designed the designer? Who designed God? Surely, a being capable of designing life and the universe would need to be pretty darn complex, which would require that this being has a designer. Theists will typically answer this objection by clarifying what they mean by complexity. Complexity, they argue, refers to the multitude of different parts that compose the object in question, whether it's a watch or a living cell. It's not just the fact that an object is complex, but that it has individual parts which work together. And so, because God is not made of parts in this way, God is not actually a complex being that requires a designer. In the following clip, this argument is given in response to the idea that God would need to be fine-tuned, but this argument applies equally to the idea that God has specified complexity. The next one is, who created God? If God designed the universe, then who designed God? Classical theists have always held that God, for independent reasons, not because they knew the fine-tuning evidence, that God is not composed of parts. So the fine-tuning is a matter of when you think something needs fine-tuning, it has a bunch of parts that has to be arranged and just right in order to do whatever it does. Like a, a watch, all the parts have to be arranged just right in order to function. But God is partless. So there's nothing to fine-tune in the case of God. God either is or is not. So it just, it's just it's what they call a red herring. It's an objection that just doesn't understand classical theism. So, to recap, the argument is that only things which are made of parts, and are thus complex or in need of fine-tuning, require a designer. God, however, is not made of parts, therefore, God does not require a designer. As far as I'm concerned, this is a valid argument, and the conclusion does follow from the premises. But I disagree with the premise that God has no parts. To explain my disagreement, I'd like to apply some pressure to the idea of parts as it's used in this argument, because I think this idea is being made artificially narrow so as to exclude God ad hoc. Why do I say this? Well, take a look at this tool. This is one solid piece of plastic, but it moves in such a way as to apparently serve a function. It acts like a vice grip. This tool doesn't have distinct parts the way a watch does, but I think it's clear that William Paley himself would have accepted this as an example of specified complexity, or even fine-tuning, which indicates design. While this object may not have separate parts in the more traditional sense, as a watch does, it still has identifiable features or areas which interact with each other to produce an effect, rather than simply being a formless lump. The same could be said for objects with fixed shapes, like a hammer or a chair. This, I think, is a more accurate way to describe the parts of something as indicators of design. In fact, Dr. Collins seems to agree with my assessment. In the same video where he argued that God does not have parts, he argued that a hypothetical colony of mold that looks like Abraham Lincoln does have parts, the eyes, the mouth, etc., which is why, when we see it, we assume it must have been designed. If you had a bunch of mold growing in the back of your, you know, your roommate's refrigerator that looked like the picture of Abraham Lincoln, um, you wouldn't just accept that was there by chance. Um, the reason is, is because you, it has parts, different pieces of it, that have to be arranged just right in order to get the picture of Abraham Lincoln. So you demand an explanation. That's what the universe is like. 
But God is not like that. God doesn't have those parts. It has to be arranged just right. So that would be the general way I'd respond to that objection. So why does this matter? Why does it matter if the parts of something can be connected and made of the same stuff, as opposed to separate and made of different stuff? Well, because operating under this notion of parts, it would seem that God does indeed have parts, which serve functions and which would require a designer. Why do I think this? Well, two main reasons. First, we are constantly told about God's various, well, features, such as his goodness, his wrath, his mercy, his knowledge, his power, and all the other features that make him the God of the Bible. God may not have parts the way a watch does, but he is certainly said to have distinct features or facets which interact with each other and make God what he is. God's anger is tempered by his compassion, for example. And if God does have these distinct features that make him what he is, well then, that would indicate design, just as the unique features of this mechanism indicate design, even though it's one contiguous thing. Thus, it would seem that God does indeed have parts. And so, it would seem appropriate to ask, who designed God? My second point about God's parts is a little more detailed, and it has to do with God's mind specifically. When humans design things, we don't have to remember every little thing about the things we design, because we have the ability to stockpile knowledge, whether it's written down somewhere or stored in someone else's mind. I can build a PC, even though I haven't the slightest clue how to actually construct a motherboard. Someone else knows that. Our minds don't need to be as complex as the things we build, because we stand on the shoulders of giants. God, however, is the giant, so to speak. He has to know every little detail because he's the only designer, and presumably he doesn't get to write anything down. They say great science is built on the shoulders of giants. Not here. At Aperture, we do all our science from scratch. No hand-holding. This means that God had to come up with literally everything in his mind and remember each idea all at the same time. This would seem to require that God's mind would need to be at least as complex as the things he designed in order for him to have understood what he was doing, unlike a human designer who can simply piggyback off of previous knowledge. Thus, it would seem that a mind like that of God would need to be at least as complex as the things it created, and thus, it would require a designer. In response to this problem, William Lane Craig draws a distinction between the complexity of a mind and the complexity of its ideas. It might be said that God has a simple ontology, but a complex function. When you reflect on the idea that God is an immaterial entity, a spirit, a, um, he, he is a mind without a body, then God is a remarkably simple entity because he has no parts. There's no composition in God's being. An unembodied mind is an entity that is startlingly simple in its nature. Um, so what Dawkins is obviously confused is a mind's ideas, which may be very complex, with a mind itself, which is a very simple entity. I flatly reject this distinction. After all, what is a mind if not the sum of its thoughts and ideas? That is to say, if you take what we consider to be a mind, and then you remove all its thoughts and ideas, what do you think you'd be left with? It seems you'd be left with nothing. As far as I'm concerned, a mind is its ideas, and Craig's distinction is completely ad hoc. It's a distinction without a difference, introduced for the sole purpose of rescuing God from needing a designer. So, in conclusion, if we accept the idea that complex things which are made of parts require a designer, and if the proposed designer, God, has distinct features which make him who he is, and if God supposedly created everything all by himself, then it seems perfectly valid to ask, who designed the designer? Who designed God? Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.